races now. We're on YouTube. We're now. Excellent. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, welcome, everyone. It is another episode of the Cross Project Council's uh, Open JS Foundation Cross Project Council meeting. Today is the uh, 5th of May, the 5 of 5, the Cinco de Mayo. Thank you all for joining. Uh, today's going to be another <clears throat> uh, code of conduct um, working session, working on processes and documentation and all that good stuff. Um, before we get into things, are there any announcements? Yes, we've got okay. some things to share. Um, lots of things happening today for those interested in getting involved. Immediately following this meeting, we have the collab summit planning meeting. And um, so that's at, at 1 p.m. Eastern. We have a lot of stuff to work on. We have summit registrations are live. There's 110 people already registered for the collab summit. And so we're really excited to be putting together that um, the, the program and, um, you know, so come please and uh, chip in if you like. Um, we also have our standards working group meeting today. That is immediately following the summit planning meeting. Um, so that's at 2 p.m. Eastern. I am not sure if that's a very full agenda, so maybe short, but hey, it's a good group of people to hang out with. So come, come say hello and, um, and participate if you like. Then on Wednesday, we have Wednesday morning um, Pacific and afternoon eastern is the node red ama and um, with nick o'leary and cj and um dave i believe so uh, if you have anything you ever wanted to know about node red you can ask us now via a form or you can ask us on youtube or twitter um and you can hang out and chat with those folks on Wednesday morning, gosh, afternoon. And we also have some blog posts coming up that are exciting project announcements, but I'm not going to leave any of those details other than stay tuned on the blog. And what else am I missing? Hmm. That's all I'm, that I'm thinking of right now. I can't okay. think of anything else. Yeah. Is that you typing, Miles? Yes, yeah, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, great. Thank you, Jory. Um, anything else uh, before we get into things? I would just add, hey, this is Robin. Uh, if you all could also register for the conference as well. I know sort of folks are wondering, and we did uh, reduce the PII that was collected on that but we really would love to have you register. It helps us sell sponsorships and just so all of our presenters know um, how many folks will be tuning in. Great. Thanks. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> cool. All right, so um, we can get into uh, business here. Uh, as I had shared in the uh, issue and now in the uh, Google Doc, we're thinking maybe we do five minutes on a voting regular member updates as we were a little stalled there uh, in terms of just uh, landing on a tool, letting folks um, uh, make sure they had any sort of candidate statements if they wanted and such. Uh, but I'll let uh, uh, Jory uh, jump in here and, and give us an update. Yeah, so um, as you all know, we need to elect two voting members from the regular uh, membership pool. And we've collected three nominees at this, at the, I believe three nominees at this exact moment in time. We're, we're saying that the nomination um, period should close um, end of day today so that we can kick off that, um, that actual election process. Um, I would love for us to move forward using the tool OpaVote, um, which uh, I can administer um, as soon, you know, as soon as the nomination period is closed. So first thing tomorrow morning, we can open that up. Um, I would love y'all's like plus one on that approach or um, a suggested any suggestions to um, change that process. But um, 
yeah, that's the TLDR. Great. I am uh, plus one. I don't know if anybody has any objections to that uh, process. Plus one as well. Likewise, I, I do have a question though. Go ahead, Toby. Oh, yeah. what um, voting strategy are we actually settling on? Because there are plenty, even in OPA votes. Um, um, and so I think it's also important to uh, be clear about that because the data will look different and the outcome will look different depending on which one we choose. And it's way better to have that conversation before uh, than after. And I yeah, it's harder to have the conversation before, but I agree it's better to have it before. What are the key choices that we have to make? I'm gonna go pull that up really quick so I, I can um, uh, share. Okay, here we go. Um, and was some, oh, maybe I need to do this because there's an attendee that needs to be, there we go. Um, frankly, I mean, having done that in the past, like actually reading the doc and figuring out which one we should pick takes a bit of time. I don't think now's the right time to do that, um, very honestly. And I don't have a good answer or I would suggest it. Um, and so I suggest someone takes the responsibility of like reading that up and making a um, recommendation to the group. Um, I yeah, can even present, even a presentation to the group to explain them and why would be good because it's sort of a lot to research on your own and like it could be really time consuming to grok things if it's not presented well. I'm not a, yeah, I'm not a voting process expert, so um, <clears throat> I hesitate to volunteer. Uh, I know Jory's uh, pretty busy as well. Um, I'm looking at the issue here too. Um, and maybe for simplicity, and so this is just, um, you know, something nice that OPA Vote provides, which is a list of recommended methods um, based on what type of election you are running. Um, and for uh, electing a group of people, um, there's some variants of the single transferable vote method that it recommends. Um, yeah, they're suggesting the Scottish one on their page. If that's the recommendation to go with this, I'm perfectly fine. Like, I just think that we need to have to make this decision up front, not after. That's the only thing I'm suggesting. Um, I think I think Jory, you'd suggested that we choose something for this vote, and not it wouldn't necessarily be the precedent for all votes. So just taking the suggested recommendation in that context seems easier as well, right? Yes, I, I still would love for us to do like the, the, the postmortem on, on just our election process, um, you know, and, and how to make this, I mean, obviously it's our first one that we really, we, we did. So um, we can sure give, you know, to take all that, you know, um, but it'd be great to just do the, uh, to, to, to move quickly on this. Um, so we're not like blocking the vote on like a, a, a presentation or we said maybe. I would suggest we go with their recommendation, which is the Scottish STB, just cause it seems like they probably thought about it a lot more than us. And then we can evaluate it afterwards and see if it makes sense going forward. Plus one. Yep, plus, plus one. one from me too. Yep. Okay, great. So sounds like, at least on the call, there's a consensus for just using the Scottish STV method in OPA vote to conduct this election. Great. I'm making a note here and the notes here. All right, great. <clears throat> Excellent. And that's, uh, you know, we try to keep that short, um, but I'm glad that we've got a uh, process to move forward. So, um, uh, so, um, 
uh, nominations will end today and we'll start the process tomorrow, right, Terry? That's correct. Excellent. All right, cool. Um, and then the, we were suggesting a 15 minute time box on charter language as the next agenda item. And then the remaining time on uh, focusing on um, the issues that are related to code of conduct that are blocking uh, onboarding. <clears throat> um, thinking that that is kind of the thing that we should focus on first, and then we can uh, you know, uh, work through the other uh, things that we need to work through beyond that. Cool. So we started a doc. I will share it in the chat. Um, that's a Google doc there that has the um, <clears throat> a place to uh, start fleshing out um, the charter for the code of conduct working group that then we can um, PR into the cross project council. <clears throat> I think that's, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Michael, but uh, I think that you kind of threw some stuff in me here uh, is the top part. And then this morning I tried to go through uh, the ideas there and um, uh, propose an alternate or, or something that we can riff on. Yeah. To. As we were talking through it last meeting, I, I think those were the notes that I took. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, yeah, how should we how should we workshop this? I'm just reading through your your more complete written write up. I'd say like, you know, let's start with what you wrote up and then say, is there things that are missing or things that shouldn't be in it or concerns, you know, that's probably a good way to start. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, so I'll just read the, the kind of the short paragraph and then there are the bullet points of responsibilities. Um, the, we can focus on the paragraph first. The purpose of the Code of Conduct Working Group uh, is to, let me update it, is, is to define and maintain a set of resources slash processes that will be used by the foundation and its team slash groups and can be reused by projects when implementing their uh, code of conduct processes and enforcement. Um, do we want to say more or less or what, what, what do people think about that? Um, I know, Miles, you've, you've written a couple of these before. Do you have any thoughts? Uh, would you be able to screen share? Uh, what you're oh, sure. At? Yeah, I'd be happy to. That's a great idea. Thank you. Uh huh. Uh, so, can you see my screen here? I can blow it up a little bit if that's helpful. Yep. Okay. Uh, so, this paragraph is what I was referring to. Do people think there should be more or less here? Uh, this is merely the, the chartering in the, um, uh, for reference folks, this is the working group stock in the cross project council. And we would be um, uh, PRing language into this, uh, establishing a code of conduct uh, working group. This is the standards working groups code of conduct. I mean, sorry, uh, charter. And um, I was sort of uh, using that as an example to uh, flesh out this year. So overall, like a small go thing. Oh, please go for it. I was just going to say overall, I thought it looked pretty good, but so, so go ahead. <laughs> uh, just where it says, um, maintain a set of resources slash processes that will be used by the foundation and its teams groups. Um, I would, that, that sentence is just like a bit of a, like, seems like it's running on a bit. So I'd be, I'd maybe say, um, maintain, maintain a set of resources and processes that will be used by the foundation. Um, it's a comma, it's projects, comma, um, or maybe even just the foundation and its projects. Um, or, or I would suggest actually, and it's teams, like teams is probably the most generic, mm -hmm. you know, teams could cover projects, groups, whatever projects are pretty specific. But would you consider, I know I'm being pedantic here, but would you consider a project to be a team of the foundation? I, like, that doesn't seem to be inclusive to me. 
Yeah, my, I, just to give you some some insight into what I was thinking that this this first part of the sentence, and I've put a period there to to make just the sentence here was particular to the oh. foundation and like the cross project council and you know the standards team uh, working group, and then follow that along talking about the projects that that it can be mm. used by the projects. If that makes sense. Okay. So, so I, I would, I would then change like these processes can serve as a, or these resources can serve as a basis for projects when implementing. Okay. Can serve as a basis when implementing. When, yeah, I don't know if you want to add it. No. My friend, you know, one of, if you want to add in at the front, like one of the goals is that these resources, the only subtle difference there is like, in one case it's saying they could be, in the other case is like, we want, we, one of our goals is to make sure they can be, right? So, so I guess kind of like an additional thing to consider with this, like, and I know it's something we've gone back and forth on is, like the code of conduct is one of those things that we will be setting as like an expectation to projects. So I think that it's important the language here um, is explicit because can serve as a basis. Implementing their own seems to imply that projects can kind of do whatever they want, but this is like yeah. something they could use. Yeah, um, yeah except something? we we have you know we haven't said that we're going to tell the projects how to implement the code of conduct only that we've asking that they use a shared code of conduct right well i think well, that's i one would of, say that i Sorry, if i may go. yeah um so i think that's one of the the key issues right now that are is actually you know relating to the things we're going to discuss here in a minute that's that's tripping us up in onboarding um so you know we've said you have to adopt the the foundation code of conduct and projects are like okay how how, how would you like us to consume this? How would you like us to, you know, point back to it, et cetera. Um, and to that end, they need more detail. They need that explicit um, implementation guidance. And this group should theoretically be the body that um, provides it. Uh, so I think there are some resources that will very clearly and obviously be optional for the um, project COC teams to, to use as, at their discretion, but then there's gonna be some other things that, that I think this group will oversee that, that we do need, um, you know. Yeah, I agree with that. So how do we phrase that? I, I <clears throat> Maybe it's more about a line about saying, you know, the purpose of, and like, and to provide the resources needed by projects to, you know, implement these processes or not implement and just like it is about providing what the projects need to do the the, the parts which which are not optional and if the parts that are optional they like, you know provide resources they can use so maybe that these resources should serve as the baseline something along that one. I think that might be a little strong for some of the like if I read that as from a project that might be oh you're going to tell me my whole like how I from my how point I manage reports and from my point of view, it looks a little bit too much. Too much. To be honest, I would try to, like, if for smaller projects, these might be problematic. For biggest projects, it's kind of fine. We can have complex uh, processes in place and so on. But for a project which has a one or two individuals contributing, it's and we have a few like that, like three, five, whatever, it's not feasible to have complex processes, like it becomes unsurmountable mm -hmm. to some extent. I, a, so I think yeah, this sorry. is an interesting challenge though, um, Matteo, because my understanding is that the foundation wants to create a team. Joe, you're showing messages as a heads up. Oh, sorry, thank you. 
Um, <laughs> the like the the intent here, Matteo, I think, and people can tr interrupt me if I'm wrong, is that the foundation's like code of conduct panel or larger body that's foundation wide would be able to be, you know, the people facilitating that for the smaller projects. Um, I don't know if this working group would be the people who are who are responsible for that, um, but I think that's important to keep in mind while we're drafting that, or at least be on the I same page about it. Miles, I don't think any project would like to outsource completely their code of conduct to somebody else in the foundation. I'm not sure that, I mean, I think, I think, I think what you're pointing out, Matteo, um, is that there are a lot of different points of view and preferences um, and that those also vary by the size of the yeah. of the project. Yeah, but and also yeah. who governs a project to some extent. Like. Yeah, and, and, and I think one of the responsibilities of this group is going to be to take those considerations, um, you know, very seriously, you know, to, to make sure that new policy as it pertains to the code of conduct has um, as much input from the smaller projects as it does from larger ones um, and, and sort of like, that's my hashtag two cents. So is maybe a way to frame this could be like the working groups responsible for creating a baseline expectation or like a minimal requirements for projects regarding code of conducts and to provide resources to projects in order to implement. Yeah, I because think Mateo, I guess like the thing I'm trying to reconcile here is like, I understand that we don't want to create undue expectations for projects, but if we say that projects must have code of conducts, there must be something, some expectation of enforcing it. Otherwise there's no point in having it. Yeah, and when I think baseline, I think behavior. I don't think process, right? So, right, and I think what Miles just said, she and you know right. process or like requirements, like so to define the minimal requirements and provide resources to projects to help them implement those. That sounds like this. You know, we haven't decided, agreed where the line is, but this team will have them the responsibility to define that. Yes. Guys, can I have a question, please? Uh, is, is, the, is it necessary to have everything inside the code of conduct? Uh, I'm asking this because from my perspective, code of conduct is more like a human basis a relationship, how to, uh, to deal with each other in a community as a group, but not necessary as a process on how to do the work itself. So is it necessary to have everything in the code of conduct and should should it we have a uh, split it uh, split it uh, documents for that because uh, when we are talking about a uh, human relationship and those kind of things like respect and each other this should be the base foundation of code of conduct but each product each project has their own process and i believe the single code of conduct will not work for everyone so um Sal, I think, you know, thank you for sharing your, your perspective. Um, I think it's important to, to point out that, 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 that question of whether there will be a single code of conduct or not uh, for all projects is, ha, has been settled for quite some time. Um, and I would not recommend that we revisit slash reopen that, um, that, question at this point um, because there are just other policy things yeah, yeah. sure um, sorry yeah no no i i, I just uh, i appreciate your your input though and and i wanted to to thank you for it yeah and just to be clear too we're just trying to establish some language here that would uh, charter the, the working group so we don't um yeah, we don't uh, we don't need to have all of the things listed out here, but just some, some guiding principles and the responsibilities that we expect here of the group itself, not of the code of conduct. I, I almost wonder if we can just 
drop that second line, like leave it as the first, leave it as the first line. And then, you, you know, you had fairly good coverage for what we've been talking about already. I just added one line, which is like to define the minimum requirements mm -hmm. and provide, you know, guidance resources to help them implement those. Cause that's specifically what Jory was calling out. We have said, you know, we should use, we have a common code of conduct, but the projects are like, okay, we need some more guidance on how to, how to implement that, right? Yeah, so I think- The only thing I would say, go for Jory. I was just going to say that 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 captures um, what I, very well what I was thinking, Michael. Thank you. That's all. The only thing I would say, if we limit it to the first line, I would just want to include projects because we only say teams. So I'd say the foundation, its teams, and its projects, because I I personally think the distinction is important. But if people don't agree, it's not a. I. A I agree with that statement too, Miles. Yeah, ditto. I'm a little bit more concerned about it. I if want I think to... that first line just says will be used by them. It doesn't say how or what the expectations are, Mateo. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know how we can make it less, um, any less than that would be saying that we don't expect projects to actually maintain a code of conduct. Well, no, the, well, no. that's already part of the requirements. So. Like, it's uh, in here you're defining you want to so from my point of view if we want to force something on a project it needs to be a cpc decision versus oh, sorry if it's a recommendation it can be completely delegated i, I don't know if what? the line is blurred the word would I don't know where if it's clear where I want to put the line is. Where, where What's would the like... point of chartering a working group if we're not empowering them to make decisions? Yeah, I am not. I just think it's uh, um, essentially if this working group decides to all projects should be uh, uh, all all CPC needs to be handled centrally. I'm not happy to to even allow that. Sorry to be clear, I'm just... I, I know, but I, I think it's a pretty big jump from saying that there's processes that will be used by projects to they'll take control of all code of conduct. Like, I don't see how that jump is being but, made. But it, it, I, I, do, I do take Mateo's point that you can read, if you just read the first line, you can take it as that. If you look at the second bullet point under responsibilities, when it says define minimum code of conduct requirements, that at least tries to say, you know, this, the whole thing that the process we're defining for the foundation and what, and what will be done at the, at the CPC level is not the same as what's going to be required of the projects. That could be substantially smaller. So the flip side, if we don't define the projects in that first line, then it somewhat implies that the Code of Conduct Committee will be making things without thinking about the project's needs and thinking solely about the teams of the top level foundation. Like... To me, I see I see this as like a commitment to adhering to the needs of the projects, not taking control from them. That's what I read from. Yeah, I, I like the correction that just like the anonymous dingo made right now for use by the foundation instead of that uh, uh, will be used. Um, yeah, uh, I think does does that sort of alleviate your concerns? Yeah, it, with it does. It does. Yeah, it's essentially it's. It's not my overall um, concern is not like projects should be as autonomous as possible. And if um, uh, I just don't want to some extent to, to create, to reduce this autonomy in any form. Yeah. No. That's not the intention. Joe, yeah, one thing you said, yeah, for but, use by the foundation and its team and its projects, I think it would be for use by the foundation, comma, its teams, comma, and its projects. Yeah. yeah for me, it's, it's, it's okay. It's, it's okay for this, yeah. So as a, a, yep. to, give, to give an example, what I would like this to be is to uh, essentially, when you want to set up a project, there is, oh, here is the process that we, you can draft your own process for COC, 
violations or whatever, but it is ours. Take it or do what you want. Okay, and this will what I would recommend this to do versus um, saying, oh, this is the process you are following. Yeah, no, I, I right. appreciate your concern. I hear you wholly, uh, uh, Matteo. And, and it's funny that that small all change of language uh, does uh, help mm -hmm. with that. Yeah, they, they just, yeah, yeah, totally. So they just wanted to clarify this, um, uh, the, the, the bit, because it's, uh, for me, it's, it's significant, the difference between one versus uh, versus the other. Great. So, um, so and, and for the sake of, go ahead, Miles, go ahead. Um, in the responsibilities where we see code of conduct processes, should we say code of conduct and moderation processes? I think it's a, a, important to call that out in all the places. Sure. Yeah. Um, for the sake of time, I, I, I would suggest that we I mean, we can spend a moment on these responsibilities, but maybe it would be best to just PR what we have here in and we can um, work on it further in, in the pull request. What do, what do people think? I think they look good unless, you know, unless there's anybody who has objections or concerns, then it might be worth talking about those specifically. But. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, and I'm happy to let folks finish their thoughts here. We can, uh, what I'm suggesting is maybe we move on uh, to the next uh, time box uh, things on the agenda here, which was uh, focus on unblocking uh, onboarding, uh, specifically related to code of conduct issues. Any objection to moving on to that? I'll uh, let folks finish their thoughts in the uh, doc and then I'll, I can PR uh, that into the working group uh, 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 file. Just one point of order, Joe, uh, Chris Hiller needs to be promoted. Uh, Jory, can you do that for me? Oh, yeah, sorry. Um, I think I lost the view from, yeah, because we were sharing. Yeah. Sorry, Chris. <laughs> um, cool. So I can stop sharing. And um, Jory, I would, I would ask maybe since you are probably most familiar with what is blocking uh, onboarding, would you uh, mind uh, going through some of those? Sure, yeah. So um, also thanks everyone for, for that conversation now, just now on the, the charter. I think that really is quite um, helpful. So uh, one of the reasons we're, we're focusing on this obviously is that we have a bunch of projects, some of which um, haven't completed their onboarding uh, projects, some incubating projects who are just getting into um, uh, to this step and are looking for guidance. And the critical questions that we really haven't answered um, definitively for them relate to how they consume our code of conduct um, and, and where, where our canonical, um, you know, COC like is. Now, I think at this point, most of us understand we, we do have even a URL for that at code-of-conduct.openjsf.org. Um, and, but I think that there's still, um, some question within the community about whether that is in fact, um, canonical. So how do we ask them to, um, to consume that canonical? Uh, and then the, um, the, the, the next, uh, bit of blockage, um, is related to how, uh, projects, escalate to us. So what does that system look like? Um, and I think, and, and I'd be very um, keen to hear from um, Toby and Mateo and others on the call who have um, projects that they're, they're um, bringing in through, and Jordan bringing in through incubation, um, that that would at least unblock the immediate uh, problems areas. Um, but if there are other points, I'd love to, to hear that too. 
I'm happy to speak from the perspective of AMP. Um, uh, I think where we're at here is that uh, I don't think it changes very much for the um, AMP um, code of conduct working group as to where that documentation is stored and how that process works, as long as the underlying um, uh, flow, if you will, uh, is well accepted and understood. And I think there's agreement as to what the underlying flow is, which is project handle this at their stage and there's an escalation path. So where exactly it happens, I don't think the, the COC group actually really cares. Uh, we just like to have clarity so that we can actually resolve that issue and move forward. But what do you mean by where it happens? Like how does somebody escalate or? No, like exactly whether you have a code of conduct that is in the repository of the, uh, hmm. of the project itself with an escalation path written down in there, whether the code of conduct for the whole um, foundation has ways to have emails for the different projects. Uh, like that part, uh, sort of like that uh, implementation of the process to be more specific, uh, doesn't really matter to us. Like the only thing that, uh, you know, the, the AMP project cares about here is to have something to work with and just implement that and, and, and be done with it. I, I don't think it's going to effectively change a lot of things. With the caveat that something that's been brought up multiple times is in a situation of crisis that involves, um, 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 you know, bringing up a code of conduct violation, you want the process to be uh, simple and clear from the perspective of the reporter of the, the violation. So I think that um, perhaps a comment that I added on number 515, and I'm just going to go grab it and pop it into the um, chat so y'all can um, see it may may illustrate this a bit, um, which is, you know, this, this is a pull request that's open about adding the um, reporting emails to the um, code of conduct itself so that if an individual hits our code of conduct, they um, can quickly find the reporting email associated with whatever project they are, um, they're, they're looking at. Um, at the bottom, uh, I added some a comment for additional context and um, that kind of points to how this is being handled in a variety, this, this path that Toby's describing is kind of being handled in a variety of different ways. Um, and one of the questions I would have is like, you know, are there a couple of different ways that we want to support? Um, so, for example, in the JS Foundation, um, it used to, the, the for, former, the, the, Artists formerly known as the JS Foundation, we had um, a, a code of conduct file in every project that this project adheres to the JS Foundation code of conduct with a link to that document. And then it also included the um, reporting email address in, in that file. And that, so it was a very simple two line file. Um, uh, and that's uh, in my comment, that's, that's number three here. Um, then we have their other variability beyond that. For example, they may have consumed the COC file that we require, but not 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 put anywhere within their their um, documentation the reporting email address. So um, you know the the question becomes: Is there a specific pattern that uh, we want all projects to follow here, just for simplicity, or um, do we want to? Uh, um, uh, provide a couple of options for documenting that path. And you know, I guess there was a long conversation before about whether a reference or inline was appropriate. And I think the I think the way I remember the outcome of that is that people wanted to have the code of conduct be in line as opposed to a reference to somewhere else. 
Well, just to clarify this, I mean, the referencing, uh, for example, at the organization level of AMP already happens, right? There's only one code of right. conduct for the whole organization of AMP. Um, yep. And currently that one is hosted in a meta repository on the AMP um, organization. Uh, from the perspective of AMP, like whether that is there or like at the foundation level, doesn't, I don't think it changes a lot. Um, except if there's like too much back and forth. I think that was the, the, the thing that uh, Nana brought up, which is if you have someone that's in the uh, you know, main AMP repository, um, uh, has, is, has their uh, witnesses or like it wants to report a code of conduct violation, goes into the code of conduct of the main AMP repository, is pointed to uh, the you you want to make sure that that path is as uh, as direct as possible and doesn't do back and forth too much. So as, as I think I'm I'm sorry, but I, I think both options where that is locally or at the foundation level uh, work from the perspective of that particular use case, that particular scenario. I, th I think speaking to like the request that Mateo had before as well, um, I think it's reasonable to allow projects to make a decision here about what works best for their project as, as far as like vendoring or pointing is concerned. Every project is gonna have different needs. Um, it seems to me um, reasonable to allow projects to, to have their own with uh, more or less the expectation that they keep it up to date. Um, and I think that this is something that if we wanted to, and maybe this is like something the Code of Conduct Working Group could work on, um, we should be able to create, for example, like a GitHub action that at a regular basis can check to see if the upstream Code of Conduct has changed and automate the process of sending a pull request to update it, for example. Um, but I, to me, I think like if we're, if we're talking about trying to have some degree of flexibility, uh, this one seems um, like something we should have flexibility on. Yeah, I would agree. So I think, Jory, you were saying there's like, we could we could say, here's a few options, right? It's kind of like, mm -hmm. could be, you could do this two line one, that's the simplest, or you can create a copy. Um, you know, you just need to include the reporting, uh, the escalation uh, section as, as part of that. Yeah, I'm, I'm a fan of optionality here. Um, personally, I think that there's a number of, um, of at large, pro at large projects that would just be happy to, you know, um, do like the short and sweet two line option, but, um, you know, respecting the, um, agency here of projects that have really robust, um, moderation and COC, um, groups to, you know, be able to, maintain their documentation and just add a escalation path like that seems very considerate so um you know i think like that's great it, it, what what we don't have at the moment is just that set of options defined <laughs> and so it makes it very hard for us to affirm that a project has onboarded correctly because you know it, you know, it, it, everybody's not sure if they've done it right, <laughs> mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah, I, I guess like the one thing that we may want to uh, confirm here would be, you know, what level of um, modification is acceptable for the downstream code of conduct. It seems like we, we have consensus that folks like need to be able to change the reporting address um, but perhaps it would be reasonable for us to be explicit if that's kind of the only moderate, if that's the only um, modification that projects should be allowed to make. Seems reasonable. Yeah, and I think, I mean, I'm just looking at our foundation code of conduct requirements. I mean, that it lays out the requirement that it needs to adopt this, this code of conduct. I think modifying it 
means it's no longer that code of conduct, right? But they need to be able to modify it to put their reporting address. So I think that we just need to be explicit that you're expected to update the reporting address, but that should be the only change. Sure. Yep. The other thing that we could point out to, and this could just be like a resource, not an official documentation, is um, we could potentially keep uh, reference to extensions that projects have. So the Node.js project, for example, has like our membership expectations, which is not part of the code of conduct, but is like, you know, obviously related to, to it. Um, and I think that showing some of these practices can, can also be a great way to point out to projects like, here's how you can do some things that go above and beyond um, without having to modify the baseline code of conduct that we all share. That makes sense. I, I, we only have seven minutes, so I'm just wondering, in terms of unblocking the current projects. So I think we. It sounds like we've we've kind of come pretty close to agreement on one of the the key issues, which is um, what are the acceptable options for consumption of our CFC, and so um, I think something we need to do as a next step is open a PR somewhere that um, describes these options um, and get some thumbs up on it. Um, and included with that, I think, is a, um, a paragraph or a sentence or you know, some, some bit um, that describes the uh, escalation piece. Um, in terms of where, so, uh, you know, to, to um, well, maybe that's, maybe I, maybe that's not even needed right now. I, I'm just wondering if it's, you know, what I'm just looking at, say this, I'm just pasting a link. And it talks about like it provides an escalation report. Sorry, I gotta go open this up. Maybe that's not the right section, but I'm looking for, you know, basically that that is the email address that we, that projects should refer to in terms of escalation. We'll see that, and and this is actually a um, a this section, and is something that I think um, some projects have reported being uncomfortable with. Um, so, like this, in exceptional cases where a reporter wishes to challenge the response from the project's um, uh, COC team or from the CPC. Um, like that, that piece, that piece specifically is something that um, at least one project has said, I'm, we're not comfortable with um, that being permitted because it kind of feels like a usurpation of the project's authority. So is it particularly the word challenge or, or, you know, if it were worded differently, would that Alleviate the um, you think it's just the whole process of being able to go beyond the project's, you know, determination. Yeah, I think it's. I think it's just about going beyond like the the, the project's autonomy. So the the concern is, well, you know, we said, you know, we gave, uh, 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 we we applied some intervention here, and then the person is appealing it through the COC process, the COC escalation email. Um, at their own behest, and what if the COC escalation group reaches a different conclusion? Like, I, I, yeah, that's a pretty fundamental question as to whether. I mean, if if the project can say no to an escalation, then effectively there is no escalation, right? Like, there's no there's no required escalation path, which was one of the. I mean, that that's in there. Because there have been past complaints of, you know, hey, we made reports to a particular group, the people who were in that group, uh, you know, 
weren't impartial or whatever. Um, we had no way to escalate, you know, or, or, you know, and it, it's, but it is that, you know, that is the fundamental question. Will there be an escalation path or not? And I think the escalation too is, sorry to interrupt. I was just going to say whether it's like an appeal or whether it's like, I don't feel comfortable reporting to this specific group, you know, perhaps because their membership is problematic in some way. Yeah. And I don't think there, this, this project's particular concern was like, you know, for the, for the individual using this email because they may be having difficulties with, with the people on the COC group themselves, like, like that, it wasn't that use case. It was the, it was the, you know, we've made a decision and now this, now this person wants to appeal that decision to an ostensibly higher authority um, where the project clearly wants to be the highest authority on their COC. Yeah, but what happens if they report to, I mean, th so somebody says, okay, I'm not gonna report to the project because I'm not comfortable they're gonna make the right decision why is the project going to be any happier with the COCP than getting involved in that situation? Um, I, I, I don't know. I mean, this isn't, I'll be completely frank. This is not my point of view. I'm just trying to, yep. you know, yeah, represent I understood. The, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, this does come back to the, like the minimum requirements for being part of the foundation. You know, the it's, do you have a, and, and where you draw the line, right? The way that this this was written before was the minimum was that you know you agreed to have the common code of conduct, and that you agreed that this was an escalation path. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's it's I think this does this question does point out though you know that there are um, different interpretations of escalation, um, and that there's also um, in some cases variability even. In, among members of of the same project, right? So, so there's just a lot more conversation that we need to help and support projects to have within their own COC groups, you know, to kind of um, be able to bring those to to the to the broader CPC, so we can actually help resolve them. And with that, we're at time. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think this was a productive uh, uh, meeting. I uh, appreciate everyone being involved. Um, we should determine what we want to do next week. Um, I've got the PR already open for the charter uh, for the Code of Conduct Working Group. Um, you know, we can continue to use this meeting time or we can spin off a separate meeting. Um, I remind everyone to, to check the issues and PRs in the Cross Project Council repo, especially the ones with the, the agenda label, so we can keep other things moving forward if need be. Um, any any closing comments or thoughts before we call it a wrap? Um, let me ask really quick. You know, the PR I suggested that we open kind of documenting um, implementation options. Um, my gut would be that that is something since that would be sort of like some guidance um, for how to do this it would be that it could go on the either the coc repo or even on the onboarding repo um, does anybody have a strong feeling about where documentation um, like that should live I, I guess maybe the COC repo for now. I would second that. I was just going to add one thought, which is maybe we should just reach out to all the project leads and say, like, hey, what do you think about all this? Because, um, mm -hmm. you know, and just say, do you care? Or are you just going to follow whatever the foundation tells you? Do you have a strong opinion just to sort of get some feedback on the, from the leads? Because I know, like, for Dojo and Intern, we're just going to be like, whatever the foundation says is fine for us. We're happy to follow it because that's like the path of least resistance and we're cool with that. Um, and I have a feeling a lot of the projects are gonna feel that way as well, just because it's one less thing to have to, you know, yeah. customize or think through themselves. So we might be like, 
boiling the ocean a little bit here, which is good. But I mean, I also think that most projects are probably just going to be like, tell me what to do and I'll do it. Because, uh, you know, you've thought about it a lot more than I have, and that's good. Yeah, yeah I definitely think um, that, like, as part of this, just can check again with the projects, all of them, you know, put maybe even especially those who um, aren't regular participants here uh, right. is good, so. Great, all right, well, we'll call it a wrap. Um, thanks everyone, appreciate you and your time and uh, we'll talk more soon. Thanks, yep. bye. Talk to you later. Everyone. Bye. 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 Thank you guys. bye. I'm gonna end the stream.